everyone. So this is episode two of the Jazz versus Classical series. And today we're looking over some fundamental similarities and differences in articulation and articulation markings in each style. So for demonstrations, uh, for the jazz side of things, I'm going to be using my medium board trombone. And for the classical side of things, I'm going to be using a large board. Now the reason I'm using a medium board and not a small board for the jazz side of things is because number one, I don't currently own a small board trombone. Number two is because I come from a classically trained background and a lot of the lines that I play are in the trigger range. And number three, after trying small board, medium board, and large board trombones, I found that the medium board suits my taste in most situations in terms of sound. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to say real quick that I don't claim to be a great jazz trombonist or a great classical trombonist but I'm experienced enough to know that the things we talk about in this series are really fundamental things that I think can help you with your musical development on the trombone. Okay, so when it comes to articulation and interpreting articulation markings, each style kind of has its own standard of what that sounds like. And there are some kind of basic fundamental things that happen regardless of style, which I will show you here in a little bit. But um, things to consider are like the front of the note, the length of the note, the shape of the note, and the end or release of the note. All right, so let's get started. Now, I like to keep things simple, so I'll be using quarter notes and pitches from the B-flat major scale. So regarding what is commonly known as air attacks, um, also known as breath attacks, or I've even heard wind attacks, this is something that's really fundamental to articulation as a brass player, and definitely as a trombone player. It's going to be the same in either style, and basically the air, or the wind, is what should start the note. The articulation itself, ta, da, whatever syllable you might use, or whatever, whatever imagery you might use, all that is only going to define and articulate the sound, so you need air to start the sound. And here's what that might sound like on each instrument. <laughs> Okay, so when you see a quarter note with no articulation marking, in jazz, in most contexts, it's most likely going to be longer and have an emphasis on each note, a little umph, very similar to a bass player walking a bass line. On the classical side of things, for a quarter note with no articulation markings, in most contexts, it's probably going to be a full value note have a clear front, not accented, but a clear front, maybe a little decay at the end of the note, and definitely some daylight in between each note. In jazz, the staccato articulation marking is really short and pecky. The ends of the notes are tongue-stopped, and you can think about the syllable dit, 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 dit. For classical music, the staccato articulation marking generally has a clear front, is shorter in length than a note with no articulation marking, and has some decay in it. I like to think of it as a full length bounce. Ball, 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 ball. <laughs> For legato, it's kind of the same basic mechanism for both jazz or classical. There's connection between each note, which calls for constant airflow. I think the biggest difference is that in jazz, a lot of the times there's a little pop in between each note. And this is actually preferred a lot of the time because it emphasizes rhythmic clarity over smoothness in between each note. <laughs> On the classical side of things, again, it's very similar on a basic fundamental level. Everything should be smooth and connected, and there should be constant airflow coming out. <laughs> 
But I think the biggest difference is that in classical, instead of having that pop in between each note, you want a really smooth connection, the opposite of a pop. Now this is going to call for like a coordination of your air, your tongue, and your slide, basically to get rid of portamentos and glisses to, to make for the smoothest connection of each note. And one thing that helps me when doing this is to imagine a singer singing a particular legato phrase. <laughs> In jazz, uh, marcato articulation marking is also known as a rooftop. Now, it's kind of like staccato, but a little bit longer, not as short, not as pecky. It's basically much fatter. You can think of the syllable dot, D-A-H-T, dot, dot, dot. Or something I like to do is also think about a rim shot, how it's just like really rhythmic and has a really strong front and has some fatness to it. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> In classical music, the marcato articulation marking generally has a clear front, has a pretty even shape, and in between each note there's a sliver of daylight. I personally like to think of a brick shape when I'm playing these notes. <laughs> In jazz, tenuto quarter notes have weight and emphasis on each note, very much like a bass player walking a bass line, and it actually kind of sounds similar to a quarter note with no articulation marking. Now in classical music, the tenuto quarter note is generally connected and even very similar to a legato articulation, but each note is clearly articulated in the front. For the accent articulation marking in jazz, think about bell tones or forte piano. On the classical side of things, you can also think about accented quarter notes as bell tones, but maybe a little wider. So you want to have a strong, clear front. You want to make sure the pitch and the sound are even throughout the note. There's going to be some decay, of course, because it's an accent, bell tones. And there's going to be a little bit of daylight in between each note. Now regarding releases, to me this is one of the biggest differences between jazz and classical articulation. In jazz, in most cases, if you're not playing like an eighth note line, for example, the ends of notes are tongue stumped. On the classical side of things, in most cases, you don't want to tongue stop the ends of notes. You want to usually release it with air and a lot of times even kind of taper out your sound. Alright, so that's it for this episode of Jazz versus Classical Trombone. I really hope you got something out of this and hope that you might be able to use this for a future reference. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it interesting, please consider liking it and sharing it. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, requests, etc., please leave it down below in the comments section. And until then, we'll see you all next time. Peace.